Wheaties presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. On stage tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another in the Wheaties big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, the White Elephant. It is January 16th, 1950. The time, 6.28 p.m. A freight train just outside of a West Texas town gains speed and rolls through the gathering dusk. Inside a gondola car, a hobo crouches in a corner as the brakeman comes toward him. All right, Bo, this is where you get off. Now, listen, pal, just let me get to the next town. I just, just... I said this is where you get off. (laughs) But we're moving. Yeah, you get on where we was moving, you can get off. Now, come on or I'll dust the top of your head. Now, listen, don't, don't, don't do it. Get on your feet like this. No, let let go. You want to get off, huh? Let go. You want to get off? Let go. You want to get off? Let go. me, will you? You ain't getting me. I'm jumping. Tales of the Texas Rangers will continue in just a moment. You take a nice, ripe, plump kernel of wheat, and you roll it out flat, and you toast it a little. And what have you got? A wheaty. Do that over and over and over again. Do that enough times. And pretty soon you have a whole bowl full of wheaties. And you can sit down to breakfast. Now, of course, you and I know not many people go to all that work to get their breakfast wheaties. They just tip up that big Wheaties box and let those crisp little flakes tumble into the bowl. And you know what? When you do that, you get the very same 100% whole wheat goodness and energy that you'd get if you rolled out your own Wheaties flakes kernel by kernel. And the best tip I can give you is to tip the Wheaties into your own bowl first thing in the morning and see how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. At 2.55 a.m. of the morning following the freight train incident, a rancher named Banker noticed a small coupe parked on the shoulder of the road. It bore Oklahoma license plates. Banker turned his spotlight on the car, saw a man slumped down on the driver's seat. A half hour later, Sheriff Caldwell, notified by Banker, began investigation of the murder and called in the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. And a few hours later, Pearson, Banker, and Sheriff Caldwell stood at the scene. Pearson listened to Banker. It was just about three this morning when I saw it, Ranger. How come you were driving along this road that late? I've been to a rancher's meeting in Almira's. I was going to spend the night there and change my mind. Uh Did you take this road when you left for Almira's? Yes, sir. What time? Uh, Yesterday morning, about uh, 7, 7.30. Then this car came here sometime between 7.30 yesterday morning and 3 this morning. I guess so. You never saw the dead man before, huh? It was the first time I laid eyes on him. All right, Mr. Banker, you can go. If you need me, I'll be home. No identification on the body at all, huh, Sheriff? Nothing in the pockets. Picked clean as a whistle. Anybody else been around the car? Nope. Deputy kept his eyes on it. The car's facing west. Going west when it was stopped. Tire tracks on the shoulder tell that. Mm-hmm. Blood on the seat. Yep. 38 bullet done it. 38? Might be a police special. Banker got one? Banker, but... Yeah, but... Just ask him, for now. You see, I... 
You see something? Look here, Sheriff. Huh? Set of tracks leading up to the car. Ordinary shoes, not boots. Heel marks are too broad for boots. Yeah, it looks like it. Look at this one. Sole print with a hole in it. Now look. The prints lead from that way, north, up to the car. A little scuffle. Then the prints turn back north. Mm -hmm. In other words, Sheriff, somebody walked up to the car, stood there, then turned and went back north. Oh, and here's something else. Grease. Looks like grease. Smeared on the car door. Same side footprints are on. The grease might be from the car. Oh, looks too stiff and heavy for that. Yeah. What about it coming from a freight train, Jace? Why? Well, there's tracks about a mile north of here. Freight's use a side and a pull-on when passengers got to pass. Hmm. Maybe it all ties in, Sheriff. A shoe with a hole in it, grease, freight siding. Yeah, might be worth going after. Where do we start? Here at the car first. I'm going to check it over inch by inch. Meantime, you get hold of a freight schedule. I'll meet you at your office. When I checked the car inside and out, I found a few things that were interesting and a little puzzling. I sent a sample of grease to the laboratory for analysis and took plaster casts of the footprints. Then went on to Sheriff Caldwell's office. He had the information I'd requested. Here it is, Jace. Schedule of freights went through yesterday. How many? Three of them. We can check those, all right. Of course, we might be sending the dogs up the wrong tree. Looks like a hobo to me. Yeah. Let me see the dead man's fingerprints. Sure, here you are. Oh, these match with some of the prints in the car, see? Closed Delta. Uh, yeah. Uh, how about those others you got? Picked these up on the door that had the grease on it. Smeared all over. A couple clear enough to use, only... Only what, Jace? You know, there wasn't a single print on the steering wheel. Seems like the dead man's prints ought to be on it. Gloves? I didn't find any gloves on him, nor in the car. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I got a call out if any hobo picked up or seen on those trains. Good. Oh, I found these tucked under the sun visor in front of the driver's seat. Gasoline receipts made out to Carl Thompson. Oh, that'll save a lot of checking. We'll forward the dead man's prints anyway. That steering wheel bothers me. Excuse me, Jace. Sheriff Caldwell. Oh, yeah. Good. Hold him. We'll be there as soon as we can make it. Something else, Jace. Brakeman in one of those freights we've been checking has a story. Some hobo slugged him and jumped. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Brakeman took us to the approximate spot the hobo jumped off the freight. Sheriff Caldwell and I picked up the trail and followed it by horse. We hoped to apprehend the suspect before he could reach a town and lose himself and us. After six hours, we stopped. What's the matter, Jace? Tracks are different. Come here and take a look. Different? Yeah, look. The right print's a little deeper, favoring his left a little. Hurt himself, huh? Must have twisted his leg when he took the jump off the freight. Kept getting worse. Sat down here, smoked a cigarette. Here's the butt. He ain't going to make such a good time with a bum leg. We've been traveling at a steady trot. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's get going. <laughs> Suspect's trail showed increased favoring of his left leg. His progress became slower. More and more often he stopped to rest and the trail became fresher and fresher. Evidence in the deserted shack showed suspect had rested there for quite a while. We picked up the trail again. We're getting close, Sheriff. How do you know? Notice something just now. Take a look at these prints. Hmm. Same as the ones we've been following. Not quite. Hole in the right shoe. It's not that. I'm talking about this anthill he crushed. Well, what about it? Quite a few of the prints had anthills in them, crushed and rebuilt. So? Ants start working on a new hill when the old one's been tramped down. This one's so fresh, they haven't had time to rebuild. Hey, that's right. He can't be far off. Yes, we better leave the horses tied up here, Sheriff, and start moving on foot. <laughs> He was asleep. He gave us no trouble and he denied anything and everything about the crime. 
We took him back, and I kept questioning him. But he stuck to his story. I never was there. I didn't do it. Ever own a gun? 38 police special? I told you a hundred times. I never owned no kind of gun. How'd you take all that skin off your arm? I don't know. Fell, maybe. You got that while you were running away. When you jumped off the freight. After you slugged the brakeman. No, no. Grease on your jacket. How'd it get there? Uh, maybe, maybe off in the freight. Sure. That car we showed you. The one you said you'd never seen before. Well, it's the truth. Is it? Hold up your right foot. What? Hold it up. Uh, Hold in the right shoe. Uh, what of it? Here's a plaster cast. Cast at the print of the scene of the murder. Take a good look. Yeah, but I wasn't there, I tell you. Ever hear of fingerprints? Oh, sure. Here are yours. And here's a set found at the crime. They match. You still say you weren't there? I didn't kill nobody. Let me see your hands. Yeah. When'd you wash them last? I don't know. Maybe a couple of days ago. You know we can tell if you fired a gun. I never had no gun. Did you rob the man in the car? No, no. Look at me. You were there, weren't you? We can prove it. Well, all right. All right, I was there. But I didn't kill him. Why'd you lie? Well, I was scared. If you're innocent, you don't have to be scared. Look, Ranger, I, I got a couple of wraps, bag wraps. That all? Hey, sure, sure. We can check that, too. All right, all right. I got a couple of wraps for pinching stuff. Nothing big. Now, look. Tell me exactly what you did. Well, well I, I come in off afraid. I was walking across when I seen the car. I figured it was funny, something funny. Why? Well, car parked like that. Then I walked over, seen the fella in there. He was dead. I beat it, hopped the freight. That all? You know what else up to now. Did you get in the car at uh, no, all? No, sir, no, sir. Did you touch the body or take anything from I, it? I swear, Ranger, I didn't. Did you touch the steering wheel and then wipe it off? Well, wipe it? No, no, what for? Look, I'll tell you, I... Jase? Yeah, Sheriff? Come here, will you? Sure. You stay put. I got no place to go. Here's all the dope on the murdered man, Thompson. Come in just now. Carl Thompson... Resident Tulsa, Oklahoma. Traveling salesman for Prince Extract Company. This checked? Double. Tallies with the gasoline receipts. Mm -hmm. What about him? The hobo? Yeah. I think the only crime he committed was failure to report what he saw. His fingerprints were all over the outside of the one door of that car, and none inside. Seems to me if he thought of cleaning up the inside, he'd have done the same outside. Yeah, looks like it. We'll give him the paraffin test anyway and see if he's fired a gun lately. And if he didn't? Start all over. And start with that clean steering wheel. In just a moment, we continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. I guess nobody gets much of a taste treat out of taking their calcium and iron and phosphorus or their vitamins straight. But you simply have to have all those things to keep feeling good. And you should have them first thing in the morning, too. Because morning's the time you do most of your big day's work. That's when you really need the energy. You see, morning is the time when you really uh, should... Wait a minute, Frank. Uh, why don't you just tell them this? See how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. Why, you took the words right out of my mouth, of course. Wheaties at 7. Because Wheaties have all those vitamins and minerals. That's how Wheaties give you the zip it takes to feel eager and ready for anything all morning long. Whether you drive a truck or plow a field or if you're just plain busy with a multitude of household duties. And Wheaties do you another big favor. Wheaties wrap all those vitamins up in a wonderful, sunny, toasty, nut-like flavor that fairly hollers, give me some more. Wheaties are crisp. They're munchy. You know, fun to chew on. Tastes as good going down as they make you feel when they get there. So do this, will you? Not for me, but for yourself. Hurry on down to the Wheaties tomorrow morning and just see for yourself how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. The result of the paraffin test was negative, but we held the hobo pending further investigation. I reported back to my captain, Stinson, at company headquarters. I told him I was pretty sure that the hobo story checked out. Yeah, it looks like it. But somebody killed Thompson. Killed him and then drove him in his own car to where that rancher spotted it. There wasn't anything on Thompson, huh? No money, no papers, only these. Gasoline charge account receipts. 
Somebody went to an awful lot of trouble to clean him, but they overlooked these. Mm Mm-hmm. On top, this looks like a plain case of murder with robbery as the motive, but if that was it, why go to all the risk of being spotted in a car with Oklahoma plates? Why not just kill him and leave him? I don't know, Jace. What's your thinking? Well, Thompson was a traveling salesman, traveled a lot in a few days. Now, suppose the killer realized that with Thompson far enough away from the scene of the crime, we'd have a pretty tough time finding out just where the murder was committed. Yeah, that could be. But why? Well, maybe the killer couldn't leave the spot. So he did the next best thing. Took Thompson's body away. And maybe it wasn't just robbery. Well, what else? I don't know yet, but... I got some more checking to do. It'll take maybe a couple of hours, and then I might have some answers. Flowers on the nose, Jace. You get anything new? Some more dope on Thompson, Captain. He never carried much money, never was known to have picked up a hitchhiker, and I got a pretty good idea of where he was killed. These gasoline receipts tell a fair story. Yeah? How? Well, this one, for example, dated the 15th day before he was killed, made out in Bannon. He got 16 gallons of gas there. Oh, did you ever think somebody else might have been using his credit card? Yeah, but Thompson traveled that route pretty often. Chances are he was well-known at the service stations. Yeah, that's right. Okay, go on. I ran a mileage test on his car. He got about 17 miles a gallon. Now, his tank holds 16. I did a little figuring. Just about enough gas was used to get him from Bannon to where his body was found. But he could have been killed anywhere between Bannon and where he was found dead. Sure, I know that. But it still looks like my next stop is Bannon. Howdy. Uh, how many? Whatever she'll take. Ah, uh, sure thing. You the owner here? Ah, uh, yes, sir. How long? Oh, a couple of years. You work alone? Well, nights, yeah. Take a look at this, will you? Oh, one of my receipts. Credit card stuff. You know this Carl Thompson? Yeah, I see him ever, oh, four or five months. When did you see Thompson last? Well, the evening he bought that gas. Why, anything wrong, Ranger? Was Thompson alone that evening? I, uh, yeah. I never remember him ever having anybody alone. What else do you remember about that evening? Oh, one of the worst sleet storms we ever had. Hit like oh, a... Oh, it'd be tough for him to drive then, huh? Oh, sure. Well, hey, um, he was asking about some place to stay. He never stayed in Bannon before? I don't know. Leastways, he didn't know much about the places. I told him to try the hotel. He said it was full up. He said the motels were jam-packed. The lousy weather... You know where he went? Well, said he was going to try and find a place along the highway. Why, anything wrong? Plenty. Here's for the gas. I might come back and ask you some more questions. Thanks. I began a check of every possible place Thompson might have stayed that night. But I drew one blank after another. Then I got a lead at a motel on the outskirts of Bannon. Sure, Ranger, I remember that night. Sleep was an inch thick. We was full up here, but I sent him to a place down the highway, the Star Motel. Been closed and up for sale for quite a spell, but I heard it was opened up again. I went to the Star Motel. It was closed tight. Every cabin was locked, the windows boarded. There wasn't a soul around. I was just about to leave when I noticed something. The electricity must have been on somewhere in the place because the little wheel under the dials of the meter was spinning. It was enough to send me back into town to ask a few more questions. Now, uh, let me see, Ranger. Star Motel. Uh, yes, sir, here's what we want right here. Uh-huh. Are these all the electricity bills? Yes, sir. Let me see. Up to three months ago, the bills were just for meter installation, minimum service charge. That's right, Ranger. But for the last three months, 475, 389, 560. Hmm. 
kind of funny, isn't it? The place is closed, but for the last three months, the bills have averaged over $4 a month. Didn't that seem peculiar to you? Well, Ranger, we, we just... Sure, yeah. sure, I know. Now, can you give me the name of the person to whom these bills were sent? Get it for you right away. <laughs> Why, yes, Ranger, Mr. Carlson's here. I believe he's on the phone right now, but if you come in... Thank you, ma'am. You Mrs. Carlson? Yes. I hope I'm not bothering you any, Miss Carlson. Not at all, Ranger. My husband's in here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I see. Well, I think that could be arranged. Yeah, sure. Tell you what, I'll come out a little later. I'll bring the client with me. Sure. Thanks for calling. Goodbye. Andy, this is Ranger Pearson. Oh, hello. Sorry to barge in like this, Mr. Carlson, but I got a few questions. Questions? Sure, what about? You own the Star Motel, don't you? Yes, I do. Star Motel? Oh, that white elephant. White elephant? <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to get rid of it for two years. Why? Well, like Bessie said, it ain't been worth a hoot since the new highway went in two years ago. Only half the traffic that used to pass it... It hasn't been used for two years. Well, I guess I didn't mean exactly that. What did you mean? I tried to keep it going for a year after the highway went through, but couldn't rent enough rooms. It wasn't worth trying to save. You got the keys to it? Keys? Oh, sure. Is something wrong, Ranger? Might be, ma'am. Can you take me through the motel, Mr. Carlson? Anytime. Right now, suit you? Couldn't be better. Let's go. <laughs> ain't been out here for close on three or four weeks. Did you go through the cabins then? Oh, just take a look, see. Kids sometimes fool around. That's why I boarded up the windows. Want to take a look in the office? Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Carlson. Sure. Nothing in here, Ranger? Nope, there's not. Anything in particular you're looking for? Yeah. You have this floor washed lately? Oh, heck no. Ain't no use paying for something like that. It's been washed recently. Huh? But why? How do you know? Scrubbing wood with hot water always raises the grain. And hot water isn't as good as cold to wash out blood stains. Blood? Blood? Reach! Follow me! Uh, What's the matter? Get away from the guns, Ranger! Both of you, sit down. Go on! Hark! Hark! Come on! What the devil is this? Who are you fellas? My guess is a couple of men I want for murder, Mr. Kelson. Murder? Just check the telephone wire. Everything okay? Yeah, push that guy. Me? Why, I never carry a gun. Well, we'll just make sure. Yeah, he's clean. All right, now strip the ranger's gun belt. Wait a minute. You got the drop on me. Maybe I'd have to be a fool to draw. But if you don't want me to be a fool, don't touch these guns. You try and take them off me and I'll go down using them. And I might get lucky. All right, Locke. Let him alone. He's too smart to start anything. Go get the panel truck out and start loading our stuff fast. Well, what about them? We can lock them in. Fix their car so they can't get out of here for a while after we leave. If they try to come out while we're still here, we'll blast whatever door or window they try to come through. Get that, Ranger? I get it. Okay. I'll be outside, Chuck. So your name's Chuck, huh? Good as any. What are you and that other fellow doing in my place? Go ahead, Chuck. Tell him. Some other time, friend. Now you two listen. Because I ain't going to say this twice. Try to bust out before you hear us drive off and you'll get it good. Now stay put. Oh, they got us locked in. Yeah. Oh, don't go near that window. You heard what he said. Little crack in the boarding. I'm just taking a look. What are they doing? Come here and take a look for yourself. Oh, I should have watched the place more. I, I never knew anyone was using it. Been used plenty. Look what they're taking out. Furs. All kinds of stuff. It's beginning to make sense. Closed down motel made a nice storage bin for stolen and smuggled goods till they could run it to the markets. Oh, they'll get away. You you said there was a murder. Take it easy, Mr. Carlson. We'll get them. Oh, they'll be across the border in a half an hour before we could even reach a phone. Maybe you better take a chance and get shot down in cold blood. No. But we'll get them all right. Know why, Mr. Kelson? Why? 
Because you'll help. I pinned Calson with a quick headlock and then got one arm up behind him and applied pressure so I could keep him still while I had a free hand. I reached into his jacket and found what I was looking for under his shoulder. Then I pushed him. Are you crazy? He almost broke my arm. Shut up, Calson. Don't you think I saw this gun bulging under your coat and they deliberately missed it when they frisked you? You played it real smart, almost. I don't know what you're talking about. This gun and the electric bills. You paid them. Paid bills that were being run up in a place that was supposed to be shut down. Seemed kind of funny you never complained to the power company. So what? Well, you so you won't... got a phone call from your friends out there. They tipped you because they saw me nosing around here earlier, right? No. Okay. Okay, take a look out there. They're almost finished. In a couple of minutes, they'll be gone. In half an hour, they'll be over the border. How about you? You want to stick back here and face a murder charge? There's nothing you can prove. There's plenty we can prove, Calson. And you're holding the bag. You'll have a tough time explaining those electric bills and them missing your gun. I didn't kill that man. Did this Chuck do it? Yeah, yeah, that salesman come in. The show was going on. Chuck killed him, then drove him away. All right. Now listen real careful to me. I'm going to fire this gun of yours. Then you hammer on the door and holler for him. Get it? What do you want to Just do Just listen. When they come up, tell them you had to kill me. Tell him to open the door. Then, Mr. Calson, step back and out of the way fast. They'll be gone in a minute. Make up your mind. All right. Go ahead. I'll do it. Any funny tricks and you get it first. Now. Ready? Turn that door and holler. Chuck! Lock! Give me a fast! Open the door! Now, when it's open, step back! What's the matter? Calson! Open the door! I had to kill him! He was making a break for it! Can you just knock him out? Reach! Both of them! Hey, what's a big idea? Why, you... Oh! 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 We'll come back for him later, Calson. Meantime, let's you and me get back to town. I got you a deal for this white elephant motel. You can trade it for a jail cell. And now, here is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin. All right, sound effects man, ring the alarm clock. Yeah, I used to groan too when I heard that sound. But one morning I said to myself, now look, Martin, you gotta get up. Why fight it? Think about something pleasant. And right away I thought, Wheaties. That's about the pleasantest thinking a man can do. Why, when you figure you can sit down to a bowl of good, crisp Wheaties and then feel like tackling the world. When you know a bowl of Wheaties and milk and fruit can help you work good because you feel good, why, it almost makes you want to shake hands with your alarm clock. And when you hear it come morning, roll out happy, reach for the big orange and blue box, and see how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of The Texas Rangers. McRae will soon be seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Saddle Tramp. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Paul McVeigh, Lou Krugman, Jeff Corey, Robert Bruce, Byron Kane, and Jeanette Nolan. This story was transcribed and adapted by Russell Hughes. The program was produced and directed by Stacy Keats. And this is Hal Gibney speaking. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen Monday night to Frank Lovejoy in Night Beat on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. Listen tomorrow for the Summer Symphony. Now it's Basin Street time on NBC.